Okay, so we learned about the Eldol reaction and condensation in, in regards to an intermolecular process. Uh, it turns out we can also do uh, intramolecular Eldols in an in uh, sorry Eldols in an intramolecular uh, process. Um, and so the the thing that we want to talk about here is where we're doing uh, Eldol condensations where both components are in the same molecule. Okay, so let's just look at a quick example of of what this looks like. So let's take this pretty simple diketone. Okay, and you know, so if we if we treat this with um, with base, we can enolize one of the uh, carbonyls. So let's just say sodium sodium hydroxide. Um, and so what can happen here is we can enolize you know one of these carbonyls. And then do an uh, intramolecular aldol condensation, where we're going to add and then eliminate uh, water out. Okay, so the product that we get out of this reaction here looks like this. Okay, and let's just number so we can see where everything started and where it ended up. So we'll just do one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so you can see hopefully that. Um, the car one of the carbonyls here we can just pick which you know either one so that's going to be one of the carbonyls um, atom two and now the thing that actually did the con the condensing you can see how this is um, you know uh, there's a five membered ring and so if the other uh, the condensation happened there it's going to be five so we just have to walk back and you can see it was the methyl group that actually did the addition there so that had to be one two three, four, five, and then that makes that carbon six. Okay, so that's how the, the numbering works out. Okay, so it's a condensation reaction. We're generating water. Um, let's look at another example, just one extra carbon here. Okay, sodium hydroxide again. And in this case, we're going to do the intramolecular aldol to form a cyclohexenone with water again. And we can do the same thing, just number these. Okay, and so it's gonna be the same type of thing where that's, that's carbon two and then carbon six is the one that got condensed on. And then this is gonna be carbon one, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and then that makes that seven. Okay, so that's how that works. Okay, now you might uh, have the question of, uh, you know, this seems like it's a selective process, and it is. Um, you notice up here, all right, each ketone is the same, um, but each ketone has two potentially enolizable sites. So we could have enolized at four, carbon four, and done, uh, you know, the, the condensation from that point. Um, or here, we could have enolized at five, um, just as easily and condensed on to two. And so the question is why is this selective? So let's take the uh, let's take the second case and we can we can look at that. So imagine if we if we took this um, and enolized uh, at position uh, uh, three or five, they're identical, so it doesn't matter. Um, let's see what that would look like. So we form our enolate let's say at position three. Okay, uh, and now we're gonna do the, we're gonna try to do the aldol, the initial aldol reaction. So we'll push down, we'll push the enolate up into that, that ketone. And what does that look like? Well, uh, what it looks like, again, just, just count the atoms here, one, two, three, four. We actually have to form a four-membered ring in order to make this happen. So. This is what the aldol uh, intermediate would initially look like. And that enolate just added into that position. Um, and that's not going to be uh, favorable. So the four membered ring is too strained. Okay, so it's just, it's really just not going to work out. Uh, so instead, um, instead of, of that enolate, we can uh, do the alternative. Remember, this is totally reversible. We can go to the alternative enolate here. Right, and now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's gonna be the same type of process, but the, 
the intermediate, uh, which is just sort of the, the geometry that we have to achieve to make this happen, is just much, much more favorable because we're forming a, a nice stable six-membered ring instead of a four-membered ring. Okay, so we get to that uh, intermediate and then, then you go ahead and, and do the, uh, the, the condensation part of the mechanism. So the intramolecular uh, aldol condensation is great for forming uh, five and six membered rings. Okay, so if you can do uh, if you can do uh, one of those ring formations, uh, things are, are probably going to work out. Um, and um, and in general, so there's another selectivity issue. If the carbonyls weren't the same, um, we could say that generally the less hindered carbonyl is going to serve as the electrophile. And that sort of uh, hopefully is, is somewhat obvious that just kinetically adding to the less hindered carbonyl is going to, it's just going to be faster, right? Uh, and so then that's going to lead you down that path more quickly and, and get you to that condensation product, which once that's formed, it's not coming back. So let's just look at um, uh, one more example uh, that, that sort of looks at this selectivity. So here we're going to have a ketone and then it's tethered to an aldehyde, okay? So the question here is which possible um, aldol condensation product is going to form? So there's three possibilities, right? We could enolize here and cyclize on the aldehyde. We could enolize here and cyclize on the aldehyde, or we could enolize the aldehyde and cyclize onto the ketone. The question is which of those are we going to expect? So let's just evaluate each of these possibilities in turn. So we could analyze first at that, let's just call that the one position. Let me just number these so that we can talk about them. Okay, so we can analyze at the one position and then we'll just evaluate what does that look like if we try to cyclize. So we'll just uh, do that L-Dol and so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so that's gonna form a seven member ring intermediate if we try to do that. Now, it, it's not that this can't happen, um, but uh, it's going to be a slow process. Um, and if there's, if there's other things that are more favorable, then those are probably going to outcompete. So let's take a look at, um, Let's take a look at the other one. Let's look uh, where the, the aldehyde analyzes and see what that would look like. Okay, that's our aldehyde enolate and then that can, can go. Okay, so here we formed a five-membered ring, and that's that's great. In fact, uh, so so we like that a lot. Um, however, um, because we're adding into a ketone, that is kinetically going to be somewhat slow. So again, if we have something that's going to be faster, um, then that that might actually uh, work out better. So let's now look at this final possibility. We're going to analyze at position three of the ketone and add to the aldehyde. So one, two, three, four, five, that's another five member green formation. Okay, so in, in terms of ring size, both of these are competitive. They're both forming five member rings, but this one uh, should be a lot more uh, facile because we're adding into the less hindered carbonyl. 
And so once we're here, then we can, you know, we have the, the faster pathway uh, to get to the condensation product. And so this is the one that wins. And so we can um, then do the condensation to get all the way to, to this condensation product. Okay, so, uh, sorry, that is, <clears throat> that is the methyl group there okay so that's the the um basically the the well, we'll just call it the only product that's going to form from this process okay so ring size um five and six um are are the ones that work um and in, incidentally if you have the competition it's a it's an absolutely fair competition um five actually goes faster than six um just kinetically um, but five and six are the ones that are our best and then if you're deciding between two equal ring sizes, it's going to be the addition to the least hindered carbonyl that goes the fastest. All right, so that's everything we need to know about the aldol reaction.